Hi there, slower travelers. Well, in today's video, we're going to talk about the process we used in planning our travel for the next 12 months. So rather than using a calendar year of January 1st, 2024, we are going to start as of October 23rd of this year, 2023, and then go 12 months in advance from there. Uh, hopefully, uh, you can use some of the ideas that we went through here in our process in your own planning. So if you remember from our last video, Tanya is recovering from a total hip replacement, which put a definite slowdown to our travel plans. And uh, so while she's been recovering, we've been busy uh, making those plans for the future. So... Uh, one thing I want to tell you, uh, when a surgeon tells you that you'll be up and back to normal in no time and that uh, you may experience some mild discomfort, don't believe them because that is not necessarily true. Uh, it's, uh, those phrases are just vague enough to be practically meaningless. So since there is no way of knowing when Tanya is going to be back completely to normal, uh, we've made some adjustments in our travel plans, at least at the uh, beginning until she gets back to 100%. So our first post-hip trip uh, will be coming up in a couple of weeks and we're gonna be going to Montreal and taking a cruise uh, up the St. Lawrence Seaway to uh, Quebec City it's a well-traveled route that many cruise ships take. It'll go to Nova Scotia, then it'll go down the, uh, the Atlantic coast. So it'll stop in uh, New York and also in uh, Charleston and then end in Miami and then we fly back home. So we figured that this first kind of trip will, uh, it, it, it's sort of travel light and so we can adjust our activity as, as Tanya feels fit and we can, uh, it still gives us a chance to get out and, and be traveling, but um, it's not like we're going to be hiking, uh, you know, five miles a day. So that's a good way to get started. Then what we're going to do is uh, in November, after Thanksgiving, we're going to go to Germany for about, uh, about three and a half weeks or so for Christmas markets and to visit some family and friends. friends. And so we'll have a video on that, at least one, uh, telling you how you or giving you some ideas on how you can plan the perfect Christmas market trip yourself. As you probably already know, uh, the usual travel planning process is where you look at some critical items. You look at, okay, how much discretionary income you have, how much, so how much can you spend, uh, how much time do you have, and then what destinations do you want to visit? And obviously, the more expensive destinations uh, will affect how much time you can spend there. So that's what we looked at in making our plans. Uh, we also recognized what kind of travel style we engage in, what kind of travelers we are. Are we budget? Are we mid-level? Or are we luxury? Or are we something in between? And I think that's kind of, we're pretty much mid-range with, range with an occasional budget or occasional luxury in there as the circumstances dictate. So that's where we are. So if we use that uh, plan and that pattern, uh, we figure out, okay, how much do we have to spend? Well, uh, as they say, this ain't our first rodeo. So uh, we travel a lot and have for several years. So we pretty much know how much we can spend each year on travel. The one thing that we have to factor in is inflation and how much travel prices have increased over the last couple of years. Tanya and I took a uh, weekend trip this last weekend, just a road trip, and uh, up to uh, Nashville, and it was just, I mean, we were blown away. Two nights in a hotel and, uh, and restaurant prices, I mean, were just, I mean, were just incredible. I mean, we were, we were at a, uh, a hotel and Tanya said, uh, we came back from dinner and Tanya said, oh, do you mind get, buying me a glass of wine uh, that I can take up to the room? And I said, oh, of course, no problem. We go to the bar and uh, they pour the wine and it was, uh, you know, fifteen seventy five for a glass of wine, about eight ounces. I don't want the whole bottle. I mean, it, it just a glass. It was just, uh, it was outrageous. Anyway, so 
it's the way it is. And so we just have to take those uh, factors, inflation factors into account when we're making our planning. What we have found, <clears throat> and I think you'll find this too, if you're looking at uh, different travel budgeting sites, that the general rule of thumb for travel expenses is about $4,000 a month. Now, some people can do it less than that. You know, you can go down to $2,500, $3,000 a month. Uh, and obviously, you can spend more than that. But, you know, for good mid-level, comfortable travel, $4,000 a month is, you know, you can just about count on that. And of course, you can go in different directions, you know, either, either higher or lower, but, but uh, you, you kind of keep that in mind as sort of a, a benchmark. Then we look at, okay, how much time will we be traveling? Uh, we have found that <clears throat> instead of traveling all the time or being gone for six months at a time, uh, we're at the stage now where that is a little bit much. We find that travel for about two, two and a half months is just about the max, maybe to three. Uh, but we find we just kind of get a little bit tired of it and uh, things start to kind of um, mush together in terms of the destinations. And we find that it's, it, it's, it's time to come home for at least for a little while before we take the next trip. So what we've done is we've taken the next 12 months and we've broken them up into different sections, figuring we're gonna spend between, you know, maybe three to four months out of those 12 months uh, in the U.S. and the rest of the time traveling. So it ends up being about four, uh, four different trips or so. So you have to realize when you're making your own plans, are you, are you a full-time traveler like so many of the YouTubers that we follow uh, are? Or are you part-time or are you once-in-a-lifetime traveler? If you're a once-in-a-lifetime traveler, I don't have any advice for you. Just go for broke, you know, uh, whatever you've got. Um, and if you're only going to do it once, pull out all the stops and go first class. But uh, uh, if you're a you know, part-time traveler and you want to keep uh, doing that, then you, you, know, you kind of adjust your, your uh, time frame or your, and, your, and your money. So we have always called ourselves slower travelers. Well, what does that mean? Well, slow and fast can mean different things to different people, but we sort of figure fast traveling, which of course we have done and will probably continue to do occasionally, is if you're spending... Uh, two or three nights in a place and then you're moving on to the next place and then the next place. The advantage of that is you get to see a lot of places uh, in a relatively short amount of time. Disadvantage is it's going to be much more expensive because every time you're moving from one place to the next, uh, it, you know, it's going to cost money. And after a while, sometimes these destinations kind of blend into each other. If you're a slow traveler, I define that as being you're in a place for at least a month. And that's a great idea. It's going to be much more cost efficient. You can use that single place as kind of a hub if you're going to make day trips here and there. The downside is that if you didn't find the right place to have your one month or uh, plus uh, stay, uh, sometimes it can be kind of boring. And much as we hate to admit that, there have been times when we've been in a place for, say, you know, five weeks, six weeks, that it, it just gets to be a little bit too much. Slower traveler uh, travel and what we do is we figure, okay, we're going to be one to three weeks uh, in a certain place and uh, that seems to, to work out the best for us. Now, you know, sometimes we're less than that uh, or more, but that's, that's what we mean when we say slower travel. Excuse me. Okay, so in planning our 2024 or our, you know, actually starting in October, our uh, a 12 month uh, travel plan, we thought about, okay, where do we go? What we did was we made a list of all of the places that we would like to go to, most of which we have never been before. And we looked at it from the standpoint of, okay, what if we only had one year left to travel or maybe two, and then that was it. Either we had some debilitating illness or something happened. So we only have uh, that amount of time left to travel. So we divided the world uh, into regions and then places that we would like to go. So if we look at regions, we looked at South America. Okay, places in South America, uh, Argentina, Bolivia, and Paraguay. Argentina, we've been to a number of times, but we always enjoy it. So that's, that's a place on our list. Bolivia, we've never been to. Paraguay always seems kind of uh, exotic and interesting to us. We know it's a big smuggling uh, uh, destination and uh, 
you know, there's just enough kind of, um, I don't know, sinister outlawishness to it that anybody from Paraguay, if you happen to be watching, I apologize, but uh, it, it just seemed like that would be kind of a fun place to go. North America, there are lots of Canadian provinces that we haven't been to. <clears throat> Coming from the West Coast, of course, we're familiar with British Columbia, but that that's, I mean, that's the main thing. And we've been to Toronto, but there's so much in Nova Scotia and the Maritimes, but uh, so much of Canada that we haven't seen. In the United States, there's still... Uh, there's like eight or nine states that we've never been to. Uh, surprisingly, Illinois, Iowa, North Dakota, Connecticut, Delaware, Rhode Island. So those are places that um, we want to want to see just so that we know that we've been there. We do want to hit all 50 states, of course. Uh, Europe, there are still places we haven't been to. And so on our list would be Iceland, which has been very popular in the last five to 10 years. Uh, Lithuania, Latvia, Moldova, and then Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, and the rest of the UK. Most uh, Americans, I think that's one of the first places they go, but other than London, uh, we never have. So that, that's something on our list. Indian Ocean, Mauritius uh, is a place we'd like to go in the Middle East. Qatar, Kuwait, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, those are of course places we, we would like to go and haven't been. And then in the Pacific, probably top contenders would be the Cook Islands, Tonga, and Fiji. So those are on our list. So we take that and then we, <clears throat> we figure, okay, how are we gonna, which of those can we see uh, or visit in this next year? And then even before we start plugging those into a calendar, we look at what we call trips of opportunity. And these are things that just sort of happen to come up. And this has happened in the past with us. We have taken advantage of those. Like when we went to Vietnam, there was a great deal we thought, wow, this is gonna be a great trip. And then once that's plugged into the calendar, then we kind of, you know, plan around that. <clears throat> well, one of the places that we um, have wanted to go to ever since we've been to Antarctica is uh, up into some of the uh, Arctic polar regions. And so there was an opportunity for us to take a 22 day uh, expedition cruise up into the Svalbard archipelago uh, off of Norway and it's right up there. It's of course well north of the Arctic Circle itself and uh, where polar bears still are and Arctic foxes and that sort of thing. So that's that's on our list that we want to want to see. So we plug that in. So now and that's in June. So we okay we know we have that. Then shortly thereafter we found out from a friend of ours uh, who is Australian that she's going to go uh, to Norway for an 11 day trip on the Hurtigruten mail boat that goes from Bergen up north, up, up the coast of Norway and stops at all of these little uh, towns uh, delivering the mail. And there are, sometimes they're only stopping in these places for you know a half an hour but, uh, and in the middle of the night. But we thought, whoa, never done that. Let's, let's check that out and see if we can see some of these, these places where my, uh, my Viking forefathers uh, came from. So those are those trips of opportunity. Don't be afraid to take advantage of those things when they come up because sometimes it's very serendipitous, but it works out really well. So here is our resulting 12 month plan. <clears throat> October and November, so starting later this month, is our, uh, our post hip trip, uh, the, uh, the Montreal to Miami trip. Then uh, we're back for a few weeks and then we're going to Germany for the Christmas markets. That's uh, so later November and into uh, mid December. January through March, uh, we're going back to Europe and we'll be a little bit in Spain and then our plans are to go to Romania, Serbia, North Macedonia, Lithuania, and of course Norway uh, for that uh, mailboat trip. And we'll, be back, we'll be back in the States April, May, a little bit of June, and then in uh, June through August um, to kind of build around that uh, small barn trip we're going to go to Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, uh, you know, and some of those places that we haven't been to. So, uh, so that'll be that'll be kind of fun. And that kind of then we're, we're back here in September, and that sort of winds up uh, 12 months of travel. Okay, how much is this going to cost? This is always a killer and a challenge. So, <clears throat> some of these are pretty easy because we already know what those cruise costs are because we've already paid for those. 
uh, and the airfare to Montreal and Germany for those trips. We, uh, we, we've already paid for that, so we, so we know those. So then we can make some reasonable estimates as to what those other trips are going to take in terms of airfare. The challenge comes now into figuring out what it's going to be on land. I know there are a lot of uh, people, uh, retired travelers who, uh, and otherwise travelers in general, who uh, have a spreadsheet. I love spreadsheets as well, but who really go into detail as to how much they're going to spend on on uh, accommodations, on food, on drink, on this, and insurance, and on SIM cards, and this, and this, and this. Uh, we do keep track of that when we're traveling, but for planning purposes, I kind of I like to lump things together because I'm only looking for kind of a, a benchmark uh, as to how much things are going to cost. So I look at it in a dollars per day for travel. And I'm always looking at it uh, for as a couple. So for example, I know that uh, our Germany trip is uh, going to be 23 days. And I budget or plan for about $350 a day for the two of us for 23 days. Now, it may not be that much. It probably has never been that much in, uh, in the past when we've traveled there, but because of inflation and things that we don't know about, I'm, I'm trying to build in a buffer. So if you go to $350 a day times 23 days, that's $8,050. Okay, so there we have that one. Our, our winter trip then, where we go to Spain and then Romania, Serbia, and so forth, the way I figured that is Spain will be... A, at the beginning and end of that trip, the total will be about 10 days. So we figure again about $350 a day. It could be 300. Uh, 350 again is putting it on the high side, but I'm budgeting it for that. So if you figure those 10 days, 350 times 10, that's $3,500. And then the remaining 47 days, which doesn't count the time that we're on the cruise because I've already accounted for that. Serbia, Romania, those countries, I'm figuring about $200 a day. So 200 times 47 days is $9,400. So a total for that particular trip is about $12,900. Okay. Then that summer trip where we go back again, and that includes Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, and, uh, and those, those places, um, I... I know uh, UK is expensive. I just don't know how, how much. I, I've seen estimates all over the place. I'm erring on the high side and I'm figuring $400 a day. We're gonna be there for 43 days. Again, not uh, in, a, in addition to the time that we're on the, the um, Svalbard expedition. So 43 times 400 is $17,200 for that. So if you take those uh, trips and those numbers and and you include the three months three and a half months or so that we're in the United States our total travel budget for the next 12 months will be as follows airfare ninety one hundred dollars cruises thirty two thousand two sixty and uh, the destinations thirty eight thousand one fifty so that's a total of 79,510. Well, we might as well just round it up to 80 grand, say that's about what it's going to be. Now, that's kind of jaw dropping. If you work that out on a, um, you know, dollars per month, and I mentioned before that a good rule of thumb is spending $4,000 a month, this works out to about $6,625 a month. So it's, it's pretty high. Now, we certainly hope that we won't be spending that much. That will be more than we have ever spent. Uh, for a year of travel, but we don't know. And so we're going to, uh, you, you know, we'll be comfortable and we'll uh, just err on the high side. So that's how we made our plan. Um, be interested in hearing from you in, in uh, the comments uh, how you plan your trips and uh, uh, if, if there's the ways that you do it that are any different or uh, uh, things that you might, uh, might think of that we don't. Um, Appreciate hearing from you. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.